Praise him. Hallelujah. What's going on, everybody? Happy uh, Thursday um, out there, uh, December 28th. And uh, when Lucifer the liar lies to you today, Lucifer the liar lies to you today or me, what is today called? Thursday, throwback Thursday. So take that lie, crumble it up, and throw it back. <laughs> throw it back at him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Throwback Thursday. Let's throw all them lies back at Lucifer the liar. And uh, let's get on moving, following Jesus and follow truth. And let's march along the way and stomp on his head along the way in truth. And we don't believe any of Lucifer's lies today. Hey, guys, it's Brother Daryl Mack. Diddly diddly dee, that'd be me. And I'm about to bring the good word to thee. And today, um, it's a Bible Minute with the Mack. That'd be me. And I'm bringing a good word to thee, guys. It's a good, good word. You know, better than good, God's word is. Out of the book of Luke, chapter uh, 10, verses 25 through 38. And it's all about the parable of the Good Samaritan. Um, we're going to get into this right now. It's all about um, this religious uh, lawyer um, standing up to Jesus to test Jesus once again, like all the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees all tried to step up and try to trick him, you know, because he's saying, you know, I'm the Messiah, you know, I'm the son of God. So you claim this, they keep trying to get him, you know, he's loved by everyone. Jesus is God's love flowing through Jesus like it flows through me and people are glad to see me. So many people... Were, were, were following Jesus and forgot about them. They got jealous and they hated Jesus, man, because they weren't of God. They talked about God, but they didn't live out God's word. Here comes Jesus to show them all that he is the real deal. And uh, it's, it's very cool. And um, the word today, you know, it's good Samaritan, you know, be a good Samaritan in your neighborhood. This is where that saying comes from, you know, and like, uh, you know, something that's, uh, wrote in, um, written on the wall, you know, or written in stone is when you say that it's secure, it's what it is, right? And God's finger in the book of Daniel wrote a message to the king, right? I think it was Nebuchadnezzar. I think it was Nebuchadnezzar, but whatever king was there, I can't remember. Oh, what's it? I can't remember what king it was, but the writing on the handwriting on the wall, that's, that's, that's a saying from God's finger. So we've always heard, be a good Samaritan, right? So this is where this saying comes from, from thousands of years ago, 2000 plus when Jesus preached and teach this to this um, particular uh, religious lawyer, right? And it's all about stewardship, you know, our service to God. And it's really, really quite fascinating. And the way the Lord has led me to write this down. And uh, it's just a great lesson. So stewardship means, simp simple definition, the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. God entrusts us with his Holy Spirit. Now, if we can't be trusted, and I know a lot of Christians out here that are smoking and drinking, you're not entrusted with God's Holy Spirit. He's with you. He'll never leave or forsake you, but you need to repent and then show God he can trust you and he will put the Holy Spirit upon you and he knows your heart's ready to go fighting for the Lord and you're ready. You're on fire. You're ready. You're in your word. You're prayed up and God will set it in motion and fill you with his Holy Spirit and you will be on a mission like no other amazing time in this life you can ever have is doing the Lord's work. Yes, you got the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, the good's fine, the bad and the ugly hurt, but we're still going to praise God in the bad because he has placed us there because he didn't bring us to a situation in our lives not to bring us through it. He, he brings us to it to bring us through it. So wherever you are right now, just know you're meant to be there. But God, you know, entrusts us with his Holy Spirit. He allows you know, him, him living within us. We don't grieve him with sin. He lives within us. His Holy Spirit flows and we can be entrusted now, right? Now, if we can't be, then we feel empty inside. You know, if we're living a sinful life and haven't repented, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, please forgive me. I did this. I did that. I did all of it. Please forgive me. And now you're forgiven. And now get back in your word. Start praying to God. Tell him you're sorry and help me in that area. And now he will entrust you with his Holy Spirit. He will come into you. He will lead you where you need to be to what you need to be doing and saying with those uh, God-given talents, right? We need to take time for other people. And this is what stewardship as a Christian means is a Christ, uh, Christians, right, are called to be good stewards of the resources God has entrusted you or I with, right? And the resources God has entrusted his people with us, like I just said, um, which include time, talents, and finances, right? Time, we got time to go serve someone, to help someone in the community, to stop and pray with someone, to hug them, to comfort them, right? With the love, because God entrusted his Holy Spirit. So we take our time, we let God work through us, and we put our lives down 
Instead of taking time for ourselves, we lay our lives down, we pick up our crosses and allow God work through us because time is the best gift we can give one another and anyone out here because once it goes by, that little second hand, it's gone. I can't turn it back and go, oh man, that was a waste of time. Let me go back. You can't go back. We have to keep moving forward. So use your time to serve the Lord he, and, and, and let him work through you. Talents, what are you good at? God-given talents. You're an athlete, you're a carpenter, a songwriter, a cook, a seamstress, a good joke teller, a good speaker. What are you? What are you good at right now? Whatever you're good at right now is what God has blessed you with a talent. Use it to serve the kingdom, right? Praise the Lord. Be a good steward with those talents that God has given you. And your finances, you have plenty of money now. And you're saving up for this or that. Well, if you got plenty of this and that, look around you in your family and friends circle or that stranger God will put in your path and help them some way, make their day brighter, you know, um, you know, where they might not have what you have and bless them and God will bless you. If you don't bless other people, you're only going to have what you have. But if you bless people and you go, well, I can't give money away, I can't buy nobody this or that, then, then you miss out on a blessing because when me and my wife bless people, God blesses us, man, like tenfold back, man. You know, it's it ain't even about that. It's just about this good feeling you get when you do something kind for someone, you know. But um, in turn, Christians are to use his resources wisely for his glory, not my glory. When we give something away, I don't go, hey, yeah, me and Karina did this. No, God used us to bless this person with money. Or we, um, like uh, Karina, I'm so proud of her. A young Christian sister overcame prostitution, drug addiction, prostitution, and she's singing for the Lord, writing songs. God is just... Just blessed her. She got out of a bad relationship. Now she's um, blessed with a job opportunity today. To, out of nowhere, the phone call. Come on now. You can't make this up. So God is blessing her for her obedience and setting her in a place where she's going to use her God-given talents, which is singing and up being uplifting and speaking the word of God. And, you know, and that's what, what it's all about. And as we go to the um, book of John really quickly, um, you know, God will set you up in a position where you can use your time and your talents and your finances and situations will come your way and be there to grab them and run them in for touchdowns. I mean, grab them. God's entrusting you with his Holy Spirit. Take your God-given talents. Serve the Lord. Don't be like the world that takes their talents and, and seeks riches and fame and fortune and for their own glory. But we do this for God's glory, guys, okay? And, um, you know, in John chapter uh, 13, um, verse 17... It says here, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And it's all about Jesus washes the disciples' feet, right? Well, we show love and compassion for others, right? Blessed are you if you do them. If we're blessed beyond belief when we serve our Lord God Almighty and do what he tells us to do. So be good stewards out there and use your time, your talents, and finances to glorify God in making someone else's day a brighter and better day. Let them feel the love of God coming through you, okay? Praise the Lord. Now, the parable of the Good Samaritan, we're going to get into this right now. And it's all, a, it's just an amazing story. Check it out. It's awesome. So a Samaritan person, before we get into this, is a person who wasn't up in the uh, up in the status quo as like uh, high in society. They were like considered, you know, like, you know, somebody from the projects would be like, ah, oh, they live in the projects. I live in a penthouse on Fifth Avenue, you know, whatever. You know, they look down on them literally, right? Um, not just because they're in the penthouse and they're down there, but they, I'm better than you, right? So we never want to look down on anybody, but the Samaritan people, unfortunately, were looked down upon. Um, and Jesus uses the person that's looked down upon the most, who was full of God's love and love God, to show them that even the person that these upper class people look down on are actually better than them because they took time and they, they did God's work and they were living life for God and not themselves like these other people. And it's a lesson that smacks this guy right in the face and everyone listening. And it's powerful because these people were all about themselves never trying to help anybody, and let's get it, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, more of you, less of me, hallelujah, Lord, lead the way, 25 says, the parable of the good Samaritan, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, a religious lawyer, testing him, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life, Jesus speaking here, red letters, he said to them, what is written in the law, what is your reading of it, so the lawyer answered and said, you shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. 
And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Jesus speaking. Hallelujah. But he wanted to justify himself and said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, this is powerful, man. Red letters. Jesus is speaking. Hallelujah. A certain man. Jesus is parable of the story here. Hallelujah. It's beautiful. Verse 30. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. They robbed him, beat him up, took him. It happens every day, right? Now, 31 says, now by chance, a certain priest came down the road. All right, here comes a priest. He's going to help this guy. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side, totally disregarding this guy. Come on now. 32 says, likewise, a levit, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by the other side. Two prominent people that should have helped and didn't. Wow. 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came down, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal and brought him to an end. In This guy took time. And used, you know, what his resources were, his traveling, a donkey or a horse at the time or a camel, whatever it was. He took time. He used his resources to get this man help. I mean, come on, this is awesome, right? And his finances is coming up. Check this out. And took care of him. On the next day, and he took him to an inn, right? Like, a, you know, like a hotel would be today, right? And he took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denera, which are um, um, Hebrew money, right? gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever you spend, whatever more you spend, when I come, I will pay you. So which of these three, right? The priest, the Levite and the Samaritan. So Jesus is now in 36 asking this, this um, religious lawyer. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Wow. They try to trap Jesus often, but they didn't realize Jesus, the Son of God, you know, the begotten Son of God, um, is, you know, God in the flesh, right? Leaving the example. You know, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three titles of God. Three different jobs of God. Like, I'm the, the laundromat attendant, the father to my children, and a husband to my wife. Three different titles, and I have to fulfill them like God had to fulfill them for us. I had to fulfill them for my life, my family. But I'm still Daryl. He's still God, right? So he says, go and do likewise. So really quickly here, um, I'm going to read uh, verse 33. But the part of the beauty of this story, right? It's a study note for verse 33. The Good Samaritan, in this reversal of stereotypes, the priest and the Levite, um, Levite traditionally would have been, been the good guys, right? They would have been good. But it doesn't matter what the title of these people are. If they don't truly follow Jesus and are filled with the Holy Spirit, they're not going to show God's love and compassion to other people. You know, and I hate to go here, but the Roman Catholics at a Vatican City are remind me of this priest and the Levite that, that should be the good guys. They have so much priceless treasure, but not they will not budge and sell one priceless treasure painting in room, thousands of rooms at Vatican City to run a water system in Africa. For every village, they got enough money to run water supplies to the whole world and feed them 10 times, 10, 20 times over the whole world. But they won't budge. They remind me of the scribes and the Pharisees, modern day scribes and Pharisees, what the Roman Catholics are. They will not budge. They'd rather decorate a little statue with gold crown of Mary and a little fancy dress they had made up with gold stitching, then feed a family. So they remind me of these people. They're supposed to be good guys, but they bear no fruit because they're not connected to Jesus, the vine. They're connected to the Pope and man, which are of this world, and of Lucifer. Greedy, greedy, greedy. It's all about us. But with God, the Samaritan would have been the bad guy in this situation, a person compromised in, a religious, mat in religious matters. However, the Samaritan knew how to treat his neighbor. Because they were friends of God. The neighbor here was not someone the Samaritan knew or even someone of the same race. He just did it because that person needed help. And they showed the love of God right there, the Samaritan person. And this is what the what the lesson is, guys. That no matter who it is that needs help, even your enemy knocks on my door. 
They're naked, we clothe them, right? Give them my shirt off my back, blanket, whatever. They need food, we feed them. They're thirsty, we give them drink. Don't mean hang out with your enemy, but we help them in their time of need, okay? You know, and we pray for them and we help them and we help strangers. It's easy, guys, to help our family and friends. So easy. But it's really hard, you know, to stop like the priest and the Levite here in this parable, Jesus is speaking. They didn't stop at all. They ducked an opportunity. Don't duck an opportunity to help someone today. Use your resources like this Samaritan person. And Jesus gives a great example. He took time first to stop, comfort the guy, right? Um, his talents, um, you know, he was, uh, his talents or resources, I mean, and talents, you know, uh, you know, I don't know what his talents were at the time, but that will skip that. The Holy Spirit lead the way. Um, but, uh, we go from time to resources and his resource was, uh, you know, using his time. He took, got him on the donkey, the mule, the camel, whatever the, the, his, um, right, you know, whatever animal he brought there and put him on there. He used his resources with that and his money to help him at the end to pay for whatever he needed at that time. And we need to be good stewards of the Lord. You know, my abundance can serve another person's need. Are you over Are you over abundance with a lot of stuff, clothing, money? Um, do you have a lot of time in your hand? If you don't have money, do you have time in your hand? Well, we need to be stewards for God. And we need to step out in this dark world where people walk around the homeless and the hungry and they buy consistently rich people and their family and friends who are well-to-do, we don't need to help them. They're already helped. We need to help out those who, who don't have as much, who are in need of something, you know? Um, just keep that in mind. Make this world a brighter and better place, being a good steward for the Lord and uh, being a good Samaritan. Praise the Lord. We've always heard that saying, be a good Samaritan. Well, it stems all the way back to this parable of Jesus 2,000 plus years ago. That's how real Jesus is. That's how real God's word is. You know, it's like the old saying, the writing on the wall when God wrote with a big finger uh, to King Nebuchadnezzar, the message on the wall. Uh, you know, it's written. It's written like writing on the wall. It's there. It's permanent. It's going to happen. God, you know, is a prophecy, right? And those sayings all stem from the Bible. You know what I mean? And it's just amazing. Be a good Samaritan, guys. And that's the lesson for today. Let God, you know, he, he entrust us with his Holy Spirit. Use your time and your talents, whatever it may be, and your finances and any resources you have to make someone's day brighter and better. Comfort them. Make them feel loved today. Peace be with you, Brother Daryl Mack, and we are on the attack for the kingdom of heaven. And uh, I just love you guys. Keep up the great work out there. Let's go out here and make this world that's so dark a brighter and better place. Hallelujah. Be that good Samaritan wherever you go. Let the Holy Spirit flow. <laughs> Praise him. Hallelujah.